this audience, I don't just see LA, I feel LA. I feel why so many Angelinos braved rush hour traffic to come all the way to Playa Vista tonight. What we know in our hearts and souls is that our city is at a crossroads. 40,000 Angelinos will go to bed tonight on the street and five of them might not wake up tomorrow. The rise in crime has us concerned about the safety of our families and the cost of rent and the cost of living means working two or even three jobs and still barely getting by. And it means more and more people falling into homelessness every day. But we all know that if we don't act now, if we don't win this election, we will return to the day of failed solutions, shelters and warehouses, locking people up, criminalizing poverty. We're not doing it again. We're not doing it again. We know what happens when that is the policy. And we're not going to accept that as the policy. So I look around and I look at so many of you, so many of us who are willing to fight for our city, who are willing to fight for our future, and who are willing to fight in this election. And my promise to you is that I will always fight for LA, and I will always fight for you and with you. With me, what you see is what you get. A lifelong pro-choice Democrat who has always been on your side. And when we win this race, we are going to get big things done together. Now, 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 that other guy, that other guy. Bankrolling anti-choice Republicans like Mitch McConnell Except, oh, accepting an appointment from Donald Trump. You know, I didn't have to get on a campaign bus to discover East LA, Hollywood, Silmar, or Pico Union. I'm not a tourist. I'm an Angelino. And I, 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 I didn't, uh, I didn't register as a Democrat three weeks before launching my mayor's race. <laughs> I mean, I didn't do that because I'm a lifelong Democrat. So Los Angeles, the people of the city are on our side. The Democratic Party, Senator Padilla, the LA Times, La Opinion, Planned Parenthood, this is who is standing with us. It's because they know what you feel that this election is our chance to move LA in a new direction, a direction to make sure that Los Angeles becomes a city where we end homelessness. A city where people feel safe and are safe. And a city that doesn't price us out is so unaffordable that we can't even afford to live in the city where we grew up. A city that counts us in. And that's why I'm running for mayor to get big things done. Now, now, the other guy, on the other hand, has spent his life getting very, very rich. And now, He's using his riches to lie about his anti-choice Republican history and to lie about me. <laughs> Do you know that nearly $90 million has been spent on misleading ads and more is to come? Do you know how many Angelinos could be housed with $90 million? Thousands of Angelinos could be housed with $90 million. It's a con, a developer who has never once built one unit of affordable housing and whose rent cost in his properties over $6,000 a month. And now we are supposed to believe that he is gonna solve the crisis, the crisis of working people if we are going to solve homelessness, reduce crime, and lower our cost of living, 
We need leaders that we can trust. My life has been defined by stepping up during a crisis and getting the job done. My life has been defined and dedicated to fighting for social and economic justice because I was their age once upon a time. <laughs> when I was their age once upon a time that I wanted to spend my life fighting for justice and I hope that they make that commitment too. Because the fight for justice never ends and we always need the next wave, the next generation to pass that baton on to, which is why when I met these young folks and they said they wanted to be involved in the campaign, one thing they told me is, is that, do you think that we could possibly have a chance to meet Senator Bernie Sanders? And I, and I, and I told them, well, you know, uh, I'll ask it. Because one thing I know about the Senator is that he is as committed as I am to that next generation. He has dedicated his life to fighting for working people. He believes that health care is a right, that housing is a right, that clean and healthy environment is a right. And, and something tells me that he has an opinion or two about billionaires in public office. So I just want to ask Los Angeles, Los Angeles, do you feel the burn? Do you feel the burn? I want to know how many people here have voted already. Raise your hand. Everybody has their ballots now, so if you have not voted, you go home and vote tonight because if you feel the burn, then you have to vote. And join me in welcoming Senator Bernie Sanders. Look, what I came to L.A. for is to elect a very good and decent human being who has been a leader in Congress on all of the economic, social, racial, and environmental issues that we face. She has been a leader in Congress and she is going to be the leading mayor of a major city in this country. Now I wanna do something tonight that is not often done by politicians. I'm gonna tell you the truth. And the truth is, the truth is that we live in an unprecedented 
moment in American history where the challenges we face today are more difficult than at any time in our lifetimes. That is the reality. I wish I could tell you something else, but that is not the case. So in the midst of these unprecedented moments, we have an unprecedented midterm election. And this entire election, from LA to Vermont and all across this country, is whether or not we stand up for justice and decency, or we vote for people who are trying to tear us apart. Yes, this issue, this issue, this campaign is about whether or not women will be able to control their own bodies. Unbelievably, in the year 2022, the Supreme Court of the United States said that women are too dumb to make their own decision. Well, we say otherwise. We say the Supreme Court is awfully dumb in terms of their decision. This campaign is about whether we deal with the existential threat of climate change. And I don't have to tell you what is going on in this country and in the world. We are looking at the last eight years as the warmest years on record. We are looking at more drought, more floods, more extreme weather disturbances. And in terms of disturbances, we're not going to allow a handful of people to disrupt this meeting. campaign is not just about the right of women to control their own bodies. It's not only about the crisis of climate change. It is about, and I never would have thought that as a U.S. Senator, I would have to say this. It is about whether or not this great country remains a democracy. Too many brave men and women have fought and died to defend American democracy, and we're not going to let Trump and his right-wing extremists deny us what we have fought for. So I got news for all the right-wing extremists out there. Trump lost the election, Biden won. But when we look at the crises that we face, it's not just Trump and right-wing extremists. When we talk about a vibrant democracy, we have together end a corrupt political system that allows billionaires to buy elections. And they're trying to buy the election here in LA and they're trying to buy it all over this country. That is not democracy. And we are together going to overturn the Citizens United decision. And 
that we are going to move to public funding of elections. A young lady just came up to me a few moments ago and she said, Bernie, you inspired me to run for the school board. And I'm so proud of that. And I want all of you to think about jumping into politics and running for office, but I don't want you to have to spend half your lives begging for campaign contributions from billionaires. So this election nationally is about a woman's women's rights. It's about climate change. It is about preserving our democracy. But it is even more than that. Right now in California, in Vermont and all over this country, you got 60% of our people who are living paycheck to paycheck. That's right. Now I grew up in a family that lived paycheck to paycheck and many of you are in the same boat. And our job as a nation and as people who are standing up for justice is to finally create an economy in this country that works for all of us, not just the billionaires. And I want to tell you something that you don't see on TV because these billionaires own the networks. They don't see it too much in the newspapers. But here is the reality. While millions and millions of our people struggle today to put food on the table, to put away a few bucks so maybe their kid might be able to get a college education, try to pay the escalating cost of rent, while working families struggle and in many cases fall further behind, we have never had a moment where the richest people are doing as well as they are today. So that's what the economy is about. Middle class declining, 500,000 people who are homeless, and the billionaire class is making out like bandits because they are bandits. That's right. Today, you got more income and wealth inequality than we have ever had in America. Today, three people own more wealth than the bottom half of American society. That is not what America is supposed to be about. Today, the CEOs of the large corporations make 400 times what their workers make. Today, the top 1% owns more wealth than the bottom 92%. And let me tell you something else about these people on top who are doing so extraordinarily well. You know, we have in this country a lot of addiction problems. I know you got it here in LA. We got it in Vermont. People are addicted to alcohol. They're addicted to drugs. They're addicted to cigarettes, sometimes even to food. Addiction is a serious problem. But I'll tell you what these billionaires are addicted to. They are addicted to greed. They have billions and billions of dollars. But that's not enough. They want to elect people who will cut Social Security and give them even more tax breaks. They want to crush workers who are trying to form unions and fight for decent wages. So tonight we say to the billionaire class, we are sick and tired of your greed. This country belongs to all of us, not just a few. Now, you know, some of these Republicans run around the country and they're talking about inflation and it's all Joe Biden's fault or Bernie Sanders' fault. So let me tell you about inflation. Hard to imagine why Joe Biden is responsible for inflation being 10% in the UK. 
hard to understand how Bernie Sanders is responsible for 11% inflation in Europe. Or any of us are responsible for the inflation that is taking place all over the world. Inflation has been caused by the pandemic and the breakdown of supply chains. It has been caused by the horrific, horrific war and destructive war in the Ukraine. But I want to tell you the major reason that we are seeing 8% inflation in America. And 54% of the cost of inflation is a direct result of corporations jacking up profits so that they are making record-breaking profits today. All right, you want to know why gas six or seven dollars a gallon here in LA? Well, you should know that in the second quarter of this year, the five largest oil companies made $59 billion in profit in one quarter. <laughs> Want to know why people can't afford to fill up their gas tanks? ExxonMobil's profits in the second quarter are up 280%. <laughs> Chevron's profits are up 277%. Conoco Phillips up 146%. The major food companies are enjoying record breaking profits at a time when the elderly and working families are having a hard time purchasing food at the grocery store while the cost of prescription drugs is going off the charts, and in some cases we pay 10 times more than the people of other countries, the three major pharmaceutical companies, Pfizer, Johnson & Johnson, and Abdi, increased their profits by 90% last year. So I want you to think for a moment about the moral implications of this. You got a horrible war in Ukraine. People are dying. It's resulting in inflation. You got this pandemic, which took over a million lives in this country. Tens of thousands of working people went to work to keep the economy going, to do their jobs, and they died. They died going to work. Yet these greedy bastards on top are taking advantage of all of this. Instead of saying, my God, look at what's going on in the world. What can we do to make life more affordable for working people? They are using this moment in order to make record-breaking profits by driving prices up. And that is why, together, we are gonna have a windfall profits tax on these people. Let me tell you a little bit more about my Republican colleagues, some of the things they won't tell you. Oh, they are very concerned about the national debt. Oh, my God, they say.